Hi everybody, today I am going to be doing something I've never done before. I'm going to make an awning for my camper. At least I'm going to attempt it. So, um, I got this remnant from FabricGuru.com and it matches my upholstery and curtains and it matches, I think, the color of the paint on the camper because there's green right there. I got 10 yards so you can see there's plenty there. That was the size of the remnant because I'm going to do awnings for the windows, the front and back windows also. So I'm trying to figure this out. and um, My plan was to make 5 by 7 which is what the size of the carpet underneath the fabric is. So up here I have it right at the edge of the carpet. So that's 5 feet. So this edge is going to be sewn onto the Keter rope, K-E-D-E-R. That's the part that goes through the awning rail, which is also called Keter rail. And then five feet would be to here. So you can see it's almost there. So I was thinking I was going to have to sew two of these together, but that would bring it out too far. So I think I'm going to stop it here. And then I'm going to bring scalloped part. What do they call that? Um, a valance, I guess. Attach a piece of this fabric to the front here and to the sides there and then what I will cut over here and um, they will be like a valance hanging down with scallops so I've watched YouTube videos I've looked at some tutorials and I'm gonna get this started I'm waiting on the mail to come because it has the piece that gets attached to there that goes in the Keter rail and it also has the bias binding that will go on the edge of the scallops. So I will be back. Well, this is all done by trial and error since I've never done this before. So I plan A, B, and C. Plan A was to take that quilt right there that has a scalloped edge. And I trace the scallop along here. As you can see, it's not much of a scallop. I wasn't happy with that. So then I got this platter here. And I made a template on paper. Now, I like that one much better. So I traced that here. As you can see all the way down there. That worked good. Much more of a scallop. What I don't want is points like that. Because it's going to be too hard to do the binding. Since I've never done that before. So then I took this paper and cut out a little thing there. So that would make... The scallop without a point. Well then the problem was I had already drawn it on with a pen which I shouldn't have done. So that was plan, let's see, this was A, this was B, this was C. So now we're going to plan D. I had lined this up right there kind of at the edge of the salvage and now I'm going to have to line it up all the way up there so that I can go above the uh, ink marks that I did. And what I've done is marked it now on here, so that's where I know where to stop drawing the line. And then I can do the little scoop. So, plan D, we're going to get this done. Um, I left nine and a half inches here, so there's plenty that I'll still have a good valance hanging down. And we'll continue on. Okay, I've got my scallops all cut and pinned. They are ready to sew with the binding on there. And I wanted to show you this binding that I used. I watched a video from SailRight.com. There's the website. And this is the binding that they suggested for scallops. It's very soft, as you can see. And it doesn't bunch up at all when you're going around the curves. It's very soft. I think it was 35 cents a yard, if I'm not mistaken. And this color is called natural. It looks white on the camera. It's kind of an off-white, which is the only color in the soft binding that would match my awning fabric. I also got um, upholstery thread, and this is polyester. Let me see here. Nylon. 100% nylon. So you don't want to use cotton thread, according to what I've read, because it will disintegrate being out in the weather. 
I also have heavy duty needles for my sewing machine. I'm going to attempt this on my regular sewing machine. So I'll get to sewing these and then I will be back. Okay, I got the first scallop sewn on. That's the front. You can see the binding came out really nice. I did use a zigzag stitch, which is what they recommended because then it grabs more of the fabric. So now I have made this little piece for the corner. This is where the grommet will go. I saw this on a blog post. Um, it makes the fabric thicker, so the grommet isn't just pushing on one layer of fabric. And the reason that this is further down is because I'm trying to line up the binding there so when it's sewn, they meet up. And guys, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I'm just winging it, and hopefully it'll work out going to continue on okay it seems to be working out so what I've done I've sewed this tab in here for the grommets and when I attach the main awning to the scallop piece I just do a regular seam right sides together then I zigzagged it and then trimmed it back and the reason I trimmed it back is because then I take it and I put it on the fold after the two sides are sewn together and then I stitched along here. And what that does is give it, let me see if I can do this with one hand. When it's actually hanging, it'll hang down really nice. This little flap will be up underneath there and that'll hang with a good fold there. So I'm gonna finish this up and then I have to attach it to the tubing that goes in the awning rail. Okay, all of the valances are done. Now I'm sewing on the rope. Um, this is from SailRight.com also, S-A-I-L-R-I-T-E. And what I've done is just turn this under. I lightly ironed it because it actually melts from the iron because of whatever the finish is on it that makes it uh, water resistant. So I've got a zipper foot on my sewing machine and I've got it butt it right up, you can see, to the uh, tubing there. And I'm going to sew this and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to sew it one more time just a little bit further away. And the awning should be done except for the grommets. Okay, I'm doing the second row. I just wanted to show you that. And this time I am butting the edge see if I can point to it that right there instead of butting it up to the edge of the tubing I'm now butting it up to the edge of the line of stitching so on the back you can tell this is pretty wide and you can see the two lines of stitching there so there's plenty of room and I definitely would suggest doing two lines of stitching to make it more secure so I'm almost done here the awning is all done, except for the grommet holes. I know it's hard to see as it's laying flat on my floor, uh, but let me show you. So this is how it will hang here. I did do separate pieces and I do need to do a little bit of hand stitching there to bring them together. But other than that, except for putting the grommet holes here, it's all finished. So. Your inside seams are hidden because they're up inside there, except for, again, in the corners. My sewing machine was not going to go over those thick clumps of fabric there, so I'm going to have to do that by hand. Um, but anyway, there it is. So I'm pretty happy with it. Here is the double line of stitching, as I showed you. That's what it looks like on the back. And that's it. It's all done. All right, everybody. So the next picture will be of it on my camper, which won't be for like a week and a half till I get it set up. And I will put all the links for all of these supplies down in the description. I hope it helped you. I absolutely had no idea what I was doing, but I think it came out okay. Okay, here is the awning in place on my camper for the first time. It's kind of noisy here because of this. Look at that. What a perfect, beautiful sight. Right over here, there's the fire ring right there. 
And earlier, there's a bunch of us here and we were sitting in the river in our chairs, or in the creek. So, this is it. Came out really good. All the curves, the corners don't look too bad. Just a tiny little bit wonky, but I think they came out good. So hopefully you can hear me over the noise of the creek. I will see you on the next video. Make sure you subscribe. Bye.